Hello, everybody, and welcome to A Model in a Movie, episode, I think, 15? Sure, why not? I think Who it knows? is uh, the Cocaine Bear, which that'll probably get us flagged for even saying that on YouTube, which is something I checked, Whiplash, and Scores and Soundtracks. Scores and Soundtracks. With, with some model stuff in the beginning. Brian Clark, my co-host, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, man. You know, it's that, uh, we were just talking, it's that time of year, buddy. You know, oh, the, dude. That uh, post- holiday break uh students are all cabin fevered completely out and when's your spring break i have two more weeks uh the week we get good friday off and then we're off that week and we don't go back until the ninth because we're in the uh that's the other thing we're right in the middle of the eclipse that's coming on oh that's right we are dead center. Like it's going right over my house. That's pretty cool. My parents are driving to Indianapolis to spend the night to go see it. So a lot of people drive there. And yeah. the reason that they've shut down every school pretty much in Ohio for that day, because they're expecting like kids just to just fuck the people or and... kids to blind themselves. <laughs> well, well, no, they're actually passing out glasses at schools for free. Oh, cool. They're going to be. So that's awesome. Um, yeah. And it's, it's cool. Cause uh, you know, I'm planning on, you know, die Funny. before the next one no no i'm gonna no. find some people i don't like and i'm gonna sacrifice them to the eclipse guy <laughs> <laughs> what happens that's... during the eclipse stays in the eclipse I'm sure that right now that list is very long <laughs> with the way things are going this time of year man yeah. i so my spring i have next week and then i have my spring break so this is why everything's going crazy so this episode people this should be out i'm like that friday of my spring break when i'm going uh i have adepticon coming up so i'll have a little report after that and then bunch of other crap so and wonderfest planning coming we're trying to get that squared away what we're trying to print and stuff you're still going right still going to wonder oh, yes yeah. okay all right Dude, i got my i'm uh, the only thing is i'm not doing is and i think we kind of talked about this on the phone the other day i'm just not staying sunday night normally i yeah. stay sunday and go home monday nice and relaxed and you know but i have to go back to work on monday so uh, three o'clock uh, i'll have to be out the door yeah i'll be huffing around out well, I have to stay there till five since we have the table, but we'll be leaving. I'll be, oh, leaving. I'll be I think Scott's staying. Oh, I have good? a bad news too. Jamie, I think is going. What's bad about that? I know she's <sighs> going. We already planned. She and I are going to take a picture together at dinner and we're not going to talk about <laughs> the fact that you're in the picture. I thought so, it was on her Facebook account. She, was, it, was it her parents? Yeah. Or, no, wait, yeah. where? She took a picture this past weekend. Oh, that was you. her... Uh, Mom and her mom's boyfriend. Okay. And it was you. And she mentions them, but not you. Even though you're standing right next to her. I don't matter. So I, said, hey. I, don't matter. <laughs> I told her, th- I said, hey, I'm going uh, <laughs> to, we're going to go to dinner together. We'll take a picture. But you won't mention, <laughs> mention, I think I called you the wizard. And I hope post. she understands dinner is at the bowling alley. <laughs> so I don't think. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, the, Scott and I kind of talked about this a little bit on the episode coming out, but, uh, with the situation with my car, I don't think I'm driving down. I think, and Jamie's going to drive separate. And I think Scott and I are driving down together, which is your God. Yeah. What's so I, Dude, I, and so then Jamie's going to drive down and I'm going to go back with her. Um, so I think we'll Dude. be doing some live streaming on the way down there of our violent <laughs> fights in the, in his minivan. I don't know. <laughs> But are you are you leaving Friday or are you yeah we'll be Thursday? leaving Friday morning early and then getting down there like Friday afternoon so yeah, I, I can't leave until two so I'll okay. probably get to about eight eight thirty somewhere in there okay man all right so we got a lot to talk about everybody this is a kind of we've we haven't done this before talking about something extra so it might go a little longer than normal but we're doing our favorite can we say favorite because yeah or what we consider some how about this some Current, of the top. like some top are some, some of our top it's not my f- a lot of them are my favorites but i've had so many since that i yeah. really love but i went back to like things that made me like start collecting music from movies so it's the ones that i think are uh, awesome and are like part of my roots of that because I have tons of stuff that i like to like i buy soundtracks on vinyl all the time so we'll be doing our top 10 scores and our top 10 soundtracks. Now, there was a kink I found. In some of my scores, there's also music. It's weird. Like, so there's some crossover um, between yeah. scores and soundtracks. So 
I don't want to have everyone here come at us and say we didn't do it right. We're doing it the best we can. <laughs> I mean, we are professionals so, in everything we do. How can yes, they... pro- yes. Jank is the key word, and I have a new thing for jank to put in. I'll put it right there. <laughs> okay. uh, if you have any questions for us, want to send us, I'm going to start keeping a suggested, suggested movie list. So if you want to send an email to modelclubtv at gmail.com, if you have a suggestion for us to watch, and let's see if you like this idea. I'm proposing it to you live on the air. Um, live to tape. Live to digital? Live. What do they call live it to, anymore? I don't live, even know. Live to computer. <laughs> live to computer. Um, I do one, because the way we work this is you pick a movie, I pick a movie, and we go back and forth. What if we switch it up a little bit? You pick a movie, I pick a movie. Then we pull out of a hat from the list of listener movies. And if it's, I'm only going to put ones in there, like if we have both not seen it and we'll okay. do it that way. Okay. So I was thinking maybe every third we do a viewer's cool. choice kind of thing. Awesome. Try That's something cool. alone. It's honestly, sometimes it's hard to, yeah. You know, I've, I, and you know, I've, I've come at you and be like, okay, I got these six <laughs> movies. Have you seen any of them? And you're like, oh, you know, so I, yeah. I have a hard time sometimes. I, I think I have my choice picked out. For the next think, episode, we're recording now. You think? Awesome. I, I no, I, I, it, unless something <laughs> happens in the middle of this episode, I know what I'm picking. <laughs> Your nose. All right. Yeah. Well, that too. Yeah. Um. Oh, all right. What you got? What you got? New stuff. Model wise, what are you working on? What am I working? Well, I. Uh, so we have a uh, at my IPMS, my local IPMS. Um, we do. Uh, an auction every February. And I, I picked up, uh, what did I get? I got the, excuse me. Oh my goodness. The, uh, lunar landing, the Ravel one, okay, which I had, and I did it years ago. And then when my basement flooded with three feet of my neighbor's sewage, uh, I lost it cause I was going to hold on to that and clean it. Um, and I've got the Jupiter two from the lost in space movie. Um, but the other part is I got a monogram version of the Aurora Superman. And I have Polar Light's version of that. I have two of them, actually. What's the difference between them? It's, they're just nothing. Just, nothing, every pop. just the box? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and I, was, I offered the guy five bucks. The box had writing on it. All sorts. It was, every, every piece was broken off the sprue. And he was like, you must have ten. I was like, oh, okay. well, you're not getting it from me. So one of the guys, <laughs> one of the guys um, in the club was like, he bought it and he's always been comp. He likes the fact that I don't do what everybody else does. Yeah. He's, he bought it and gave it to me. <laughs> so I've been um, working on it and I am doing it and um, I'm going to give it to him oh. as a gift. Nice. Cause I already have two and that's yeah. why I wasn't working over five bucks. So um, since he's so, you know, I got the working on the bricks here and, I, no. That brings back memories. That was one of the first models I've ever put together. And I it was see. with that shitty glue that never really worked and everything kind of fell apart. Well, the testers glue? Yeah. And it, as yeah. a kid, you're just like, it's all over my hands. And the bricks are sticking to my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, totally. It's totally what it was. Getting high in the basement because yes. they had humans yes. were it smelled like citrus, but it was so delicious at the same time. I remember time. my dad coming down in like rubber banding parts together, and I'm like, oh, that's that's smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we we didn't know that stuff. Right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I did a little scraping of the seam. I got rid of a lot of it, believe it or not, and kind of you know it's all primed up. Yeah. So working on that, and uh, what else? Oh, <laughs> this is what I've been working on during the. Uh, Saturday nights. Uh, I got my uh, Dracula. Hey, came out pretty good, huh? Yeah, it did. Except for one thing. See, look at that, huh? You like that? Oh, what happened there? The crack. I'm an idiot. Oh. So, because you do a lot of when you <laughs> do a lot idiot. of <laughs> when you do a lot of stuff with capes, a lot of times you put the cape on and you put the head on and whatever. And I was just like, eh, that's what you do. His head is too big to do that. So I put the head on, and then I couldn't get the cape on. So I had to cut the sides of the, and that's what those are. The, they're the cuts, and oh, I just filled. Okay. I got to stand them down. Well, not it's it's a plastic. What is it? Perfect plastic. It's it's okay. liquid. It's aqua. 
water aqua what the you can tell dude that it's late dude, we're both yeah this is very uh-huh. late for brian it's, it's after I'm it's after eight now. o'clock that's right on a, on a school day. <laughs> so uh it's water based so you could just you know wet toothpick and rub it out and then just yeah. touch it. so it'll it'll be okay it's just yeah cool and to put it on i was like God, that, that, i built one of those before and it's hey, I, it's not like it's not my thing i, I don't like i understand it's a they were hard like they weren't fun not, for me they're not easy they're no, really not no <laughs> it's like it a lot of fiddly thing. parts things don't fit right and it was the, it, the and then i had to ship them so then it was like god dang and the locator marks like for the I don't know. actually it, it ties in right. the i built and painted all a lot of those for christopher young who is the composer for the Hellraiser set scores and Spider Man and all the stuff that I found out on accident. Once I started building this stuff, I always talked to a secretary. I think I've told this story before somewhere. And I'm like, well, who am I? Who's Chris? Like, what? Is, like, oh, he's Christopher Young. He's a composer for movie. I go, what? Wait, the same Christopher Young that I was just listening to the Hellraiser 2 score? <laughs> like, and I'm like, yeah, that's the same. I'm like, no way. So that's it's, who it's I did those cool. for. Cool. Yeah. I mean, they're. Like I said, they're, it, once it's done, it's cool. It's different. Yeah. Because you know, we have all the. Roy has been post sending his in, and his are like, I love that he's sending. I, I appreciate yeah. them because I know how shitty it is to yeah. make and make them look good. So that's cool. It's, yeah, I thought it came out okay. Yeah. You know, and you can't really. I like I your little... wheel choices. I like the yellow wheels with the green well, rim. Well, that's, that's what's on the cover. Yeah. I wouldn't. I would paint them black and silver. Cause, but but you know there's me. so much black on here already. I know. You know, and so I just want to be a little different. But anyhow, so I yeah. did that, uh, and I finished some of. Uh, well, m- look, at my man Molder's done. <laughs> yeah, Hell yeah! Him. All right. Hard to. I mean, the eyes are hard yeah. to tell, but they're actually halfway decent. Not great. It's a great little piece. Good for me. And uh, of course, you got to have his girlfriend. She came out okay. Again, it's a little washed out, but in the camera, but it came yeah. out okay. Cool. And finish this guy these are all the things i was like working on last time you know yeah <laughs> trust me safe spot <laughs> i know but i mean they're actually yeah. done this like in last time like yeah. robo here he was all just white or silver yeah you know i got black highlights in there and, and all that and then of course as you can see he's done man. Your superman nice he's done and he, i love him it's awesome it's so big yeah it, well <laughs> I'm not going to say, are we in the first seven minutes? Anyhow. Yeah, I already swore. I think so. So there we go. It's yeah, it's hard to show the. Um, but yeah, dude, I, I love it. It's how was it to paint easy? Did you? It was easy. Okay. It was easy. The, the toughest part was in here. It's kind of, yeah, that's kind of what I figured. Shirts, the shirt and the uniform, they're all connected. Yep. And so you have to really and I would. I'd go in and I get white on the blue and then I get blue on the white and I get white on the blue and then I get blue on the white. And then I just said, it's going on my shelf. I don't care. So I actually did a pretty decent job of getting it cleaned up, but yeah, no one's going to know. So yeah, so that's so Aurora. Mar- oh, and I started Tusk also, but I just, I'm, I just have him glued together. I haven't done anything else with it. So that'll be coming. Cool. And, uh, New, you want to see some new kits? Yes, for sure. Okay. And I know you don't do styrene much. Oh, yeah, you do. That's sometimes do. it depends. Yeah. Because of your Warhammer yeah. and Blood Bowl. Uh, you got the, the John Wick car. Hey, scoot it over a little bit. Yes, that way. I All didn't right. know they did that. That's pretty. It's, that's it's badass. Just, yeah. Just came out. And uh, it's only like 24. Car kit models are so cheap, dude. Yeah. It's crazy what like it? it was 24 dollars. like i i, I just yeah. whatever i mean that's nothing compared yeah. to what <laughs> compared to yep <laughs> you know? i remember you know when 24 dollars was oh my god yeah, yeah. Oh, 24 dollars. That. yeah that's like that's like i could get 10 of those for one kit <laughs> <laughs> and uh i did oh, did uh scott show his frow blucher a while back he did Okay, so yeah, show it. Got if you my... got it, show it. You go. I do. I have it. Yeah. 
from Pestilence Labs. Pestilence Labs from oh, the wonderful young Frank. It's really Wait, hold really. On. Cool. Say it again. I just said it's from Pestilence Labs. It's really really good. No, it's, who's it's, who is that character? Rob Bluker. <laughs> the horse button still works. Okay. <laughs> just uh -oh. Dude, it, it did. I don't know. It, this is why Mark is awesome. It comes with a little plastic horse. <laughs> I know. It's cool. That is so cool. That's like and, one of the best. There should be an award for the best stupid freebie that comes with a kit. And I think that that's one of the better ones I've seen in a long time. And it, it's funny because it comes with this little tube, which is the oval team. Yeah. But I would, you printed those, right? Or did yep. Scott? Yeah, you I did. did. So I wasn't sure at first. And I was like, oh, wait, yeah, it is. that's what that is. I thought at first it was something to put the horse on top of. I was like, that's stupid. <laughs> but, and then I was, I realized that a lot of us who do figure kits don't do like water slide decals and stuff. And it didn't really hit me, but he gave like directions on actually how to do them because it was the oval teen ones in here. And I was like, why is he giving us these directions? Oh. But it just doesn't make sense. Like a lot of people don't. Yeah, it's tough. Did it, does he talk about Microsol and set in there at all? Or uh, I haven't read them yet. Okay. Uh, I, I highly don't... recommend using that stuff. I it's it's it really really works. Um... And just plain water is not your best way to go. I it it's great stuff. Well, what... and of course now that we're talking about it, I can't find my. There's a uh, another thing that I use also. Oh, here it is. Here. Oh. It's right there. Right. Uh, Walther's Solva set. Oh, okay. Solva yeah. set. All right. Solva set. This, this, you have to be careful, though. At times, this has eaten some decals. Oh, okay. So, well. <laughs> and I'm sure you've eaten some decals, too. I mean. Like... <laughs> Lead chips, not decals. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> mm, decals. That's where they hide the vitamin C. <laughs> and then. <laughs> vitamin C. And then uh, I uh, got in touch with uh, Hobby Mike over there at NY3D. And he, I had been telling him for a while, I, there were some kits of his that I wanted, but they were out of uh, production. He didn't really wasn't using them anymore, but he's like, you know what? If you want to do them, you can, you can do it. So I got three of them. So the first one, and he said, I'm the only one that has this right now. He's redone it. And it's the uh, the Grinch, but it's got a new base, new fireplace. I asked him if I could talk about it. He's like, yeah, go for it. So you got a new, new base and new fireplace. And you need the new base because he's added characters. Oh, cool. It's not just the Grinch anymore. Look at who. Aw. Isn't she cute? Aw, little. What's her Cindy name? Lou who? Cindy Lou who? <laughs> Cindy Lou who? That's perfect. And, and Max. That's so, a great max. Yeah. So, you know. And then of course you got the the Grinches in here. He's he's pretty good size. Um his legs are in a different bag, but <laughs> that's, that's his legs size. are in a different bag. <laughs> Come with me if you want to. Uh, so yeah. That's a, well, that's that, a big, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. So if you want it, he said he's. I think he said he's going to call it the uh, Grinch version 2.0. Okay. At 3D. All right. We'll um, have a link down below over to NY3D Creations. And there's also some other. Is this good? Yeah, like the his arms and some other goodies in here, sort of goodies. So. Awesome. Put that back. And then. I got. I have his Punisher, and I did his Punisher before. I was. I, I hate, I'm not, before I, I, I was just kind of learning how to do flesh tones. Uh -huh. So it very much looks terrible. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I mean, I look at it now and I'm like, ooh, but you know what? It is what it is. I hey. could repaint. I could, but it's, you know what? It's part of the process. Yep. Got his uh, daredevil also. Oh, that's a nice daredevil. Yeah, and it's a, it's a good size. Oh. You did a me. Size. Yeah, but it's <laughs> part of the, you know. It's, it's pretty big. Wait, you have his you have it backwards. 
Is it backwards? Oh no, he's like doing it. Oh, spunky. oh, it looks like he has a. Like, it looks like he's got a butt, fr- a front butt. <laughs> oh wait, like, did you? Yeah, I did have a back. <laughs> <laughs> me build models. Good. Me, me, me we got like, front butt. <laughs> me, me like models. You like models? There you go. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> And the base is like that's I think weird it's looking. A, yes, simple base. What's that? I was like, that looks weird. What? <laughs> it's like, a, what was it? What was the movie where the guy lifts up his space balls? Remember that space balls? He lifts it up. His yeah. butt is in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> but his the base is like a simple like city nice. thing. Just you know, real simple. Yeah, I love simple base. I know you do. You're a simple man. I am a simple man. Simple. Simple man with simple tastes with a I wouldn't say a simple girl. I met her. You're in I don't know. (laughs) I didn't say that. And then finally, because why not? I got a uh another Superman. This one is uh it's got (laughs) exploding like an exploding thing. There's like explosions coming off of it. Who's and that's from uh NY three D? All, all these are. All the, yep. Okay. And it's kind of, it's it's very much a Henry Cavill. And it's not a bad likeness. Oh, that is a really good likeness, actually. I think. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was pretty good. So, and he's, he had a, he had some really cool, he had a Christopher Reeve I got. He had a Superman of the future, I think it was. <laughs> And it was, I bought two of those. because Superman came of the future. <laughs> but it was like, he had like a beard. Yeah. And, and like the outfit, I remember the reading, but he was like, the outfit's supposed to be like uh, white. Okay. With a symbol. Oh, I know. Yes. I know what you're talking about. I remember It's that like one. an older, yeah. And so I've, I've got, there's all sorts of like little nuclear explosions there going off for the base. And Oh, cool. So yeah, man, I, uh. And, and I appreciate Hobby Mike doing that for me. So, Anything else? Uh, no, I don't think so. I oh, I did finish. Uh, also, this guy. Yeah, he's completely done. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> so, that makeup. <laughs> this is so dumb. Uh, but I love it. You know, uh, I mean, I can't. You know, they're like I said. They're just these are just so much fun to do. They yeah. really are, and it. I would say that even if you're like starting off, this is something you could just like screw around with and try different yeah. techniques and not be worried about messing up a big kit. Or you could be like me and be like, I'm not very good anyhow. I'm just going to do the best. I'm just going to mess up a little kit. <laughs> yeah, look, at, look at that lipstick. I, I wanted it to be as crazy like it was in the movie. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yep. And, and just, That's I a great know. cartoony version of that. It's, it's I love it. They're all great. And honestly, I hope Jamie brings them. I hope he is. Hope he's going to have, he, he's going to have some, he's got some cool yeah. stuff coming. Yeah, he does. He's, he actually showed him. He's been po- the, uh, the, yeah, he's going to have the Palmer blood test and, it's awesome. Was it's like those... a human. It's like a tongue. It's yeah. awesome. And then, and then the I... Slimer little trap. They're like I think small. They're like small little. Other stuff. I'm... Good. Is that it. Oh, uh, I... me. Oh. Uh, I bought hey, some yeah. things. I got some things in the mail. Uh, as All far right. as building goes, we'll do that first for me. I I've been sanding phantoms, and the the cold cast porcelain priming and sanding, trying to repair that. And we talked about a few times to- about the steps for the phantom and how I wanted to do them marble. Like, uh, two people sent in videos on marble techniques. I'm going to mm-hmm. link both of that stuff down below with, with the people who sent in which one and get that straightened out. So if anyone else wants to watch them, problem is, I think I've decided against marble as a marble. And it's not because of the, because of the difficulty or like trying to make it look right. I went back, I think someone posted a picture of a, a, like a colorized version of the phantom coming down in the red death. And it showed the stairs and it, they looked more plain white than marbly looking. And so I, I want to try and get as close to that picture as possible. So I think I'm just going to do white marble without the styrations in it. Striations in it. So more like what I, when I think of like 
the museums here, like the Shedd Aquarium and the Museum of Science and Industry, because around the same time they were built. And those are just like plain white stone marble. Like they're not marbly looking, I think. So I'm going to. It still has it still has that glittery shine, though. They right? still have that glittery look to it, but it doesn't have the black lines through it or any of that kind of stuff. So I think I'm just going to try and do it that way instead. So I'm going to kind of took what they sent me. And again, I'm going to put those marble techniques in, in the description down below. So check them out. Thanks for sending those in, guys. Um, but cold cast porcelain, that thing. So people who know that kit, it would a lot of times show up at your house in 100 different pieces because it would break so easily. So the cape was cracked on one of them. And it's like, so I'm trying to repair and get things sanded right. So that's taking a lot longer than I had thought. As far as painting goes, not much painting has been going on. Um, I'm still working on my Godzilla bus, still working on some other little things. I have some major print projects that had to get done, which ate all of my time and were there. But I did get some things in the mail. And the first thing I want to talk about showed up a couple days ago. And I did a video on these before, and they were from Dark Sword Miniatures. I ordered, they may, released this line of animated Hobbit goblins and orcs. Okay. So right. I did one of those. So I went back, there was a whole ton of them on their site. So I went back and started ordering the rest. There's still more to go. So I ordered the rest of the chonky goblins, which are the. Big the Scott goblins. Johansson of goblins. Yes. <laughs> so look at that. Like this. Look, looks just like him. I He's know. got his so neck got, and everything. I got the, the other four that I didn't have. So I'm pretty excited about these. And I think what I'm going to do is build and paint them and put them together. So they're like a unit and do something cool with it. Dark Sword Miniatures is great, though. They're up in uh, Minnesota. Check them out, Dark Sword. They, I think, both times now sent me like a free little promo mini. So that's awesome. Cool. That's so that really came cool. uh, today when I haven't even had a chance to open it. What, today when I got home, there was a box from David Horvath. I don't know what's in it yet. I think he sent me, but I forgot. And then there was a box from Neil DeConte, and I finally bought a Halloween Nightmare. And it was the one, the original, where it's the kid in the creature from the Black Lagoon costume with the shock monster behind him. It's always been my favorite. Neil's thinning out his collection for a couple reasons. And I'm like, well, I'm finally going to grab that and helped him out a bit. So that's pretty cool. I'm not, it's not even opened. It was literally on the doorstep when I got here. Uh, I did talk about this in last week's episode of regular Model Club TV. And that is I got my rainbow connection model okay um awesome. i love it like you showed it on the show before you had a prototype version i think these are the production run versions and it's just as beautiful as i thought it would be i absolutely like for people who haven't seen it it's jim henson holding up kermit the only problem is and i mentioned this a little bit too is that dan said the the uh caster pre-primed it with something and i have unwrapped it since and it's starting to flake off a little bit so i think i am going to go ahead and strip this and then reprime it is what i'm going to probably do just to so make sure you, everything's clear what do you use to strip uh, so what i have been doing and this is gonna, i used to have a giant like bin like a regular you know a johansson bin of oh this is sci-fi models and stuff so people don't don't it's sci-fi models and stuff sculpted by scott wells uh casting by raven garfield love it absolutely it's, it's beautiful love this it's, thing and it's like I can't wait to have this out like in a normal part of the house because it yeah. kind of fits with everything in the, like our combined collections. And I, I can't wait to have this out. Same with the shock monster. I think that the, the Halloween nightmare fits as just like a Halloween decoration that I'm going to have out all the time. Um, well, isn't it cool when you can get that kind of thing? Yeah. Because yeah. 90% of the thing, 99% of the things I have, my wife will not Missy's like, you know, listen, I gave you the basement. You're not putting it upstairs. And you've seen <laughs> my shelves are just packed over here with built kits. You know, there's just, uh, and I got another shelf over here. I'm, I'm, I'm running out of room. Quickly, yeah. Oh, yeah. We have a nice her. mix. Most of my stuff is one in one room, but then I have other stuff randomly and we both do when it, it works together. It's kind of cool. Um, yeah. So when I strip kits, is I have like a big bin. I used to have like the purple power. You mm -hmm. get it at AutoZone. It's that degreaser stuff. That's what I've been stripping kits with. And for me, it works really well. I throw it in that tub, let it soak for a week. Yeah. And then go and scrub it. I bought one of those battery operated like scrubby brushes that kind of spin when you sure. do it. Yeah. They work for other things. Um, <laughs> but that helps quite a bit. So if anyone hasn't used one of those, it's great because I go and I scrub it and then put it back down for a day. 
scrub it, yeah. put it back in there for a day. And eventually most of the stuff comes off. So I stripping's not a problem for me. It should be fine. Uh, that's what I got. Uh, tons of other crap going on 3d print wise, but I don't even want to talk about that. I want is to, is there, is there, is there nothing you can talk about or is it because you're doing things for other people or uh, yeah, it has been stuff for other people. I, I, it's been the last two months, not stop for other people. And I'm looking like this is, I'm at the end of my line so I can start printing for Wonderfest. This last couple, I have one more thing to do and then I'm out. So, so, so. can I, are you going to, last year you had the um, expensive Godzilla's. Yeah, I am not doing that again. <laughs> are you, well, no, I was going to say, are you going to have another like special? I, that, that's what I mean. I'm not, I'm not going to have another big giant thing again. It was just, it ate too much time. I'm going to make a few other little things. Um, I'm trying to decide more superheroes or more monsters. It's kind of what I don't know which way to go on some things. Uh, well, there's I'll a Terminator. I think I'm going to have busts and figure. I think I'm going to have James Bond. If I figure something, if I do that and I might sign up for that Nosferatu Morticia patron, the Dick LeHart or art, the one with Ina, um, and have some of her stuff there if I decide to go that route. But yeah, the, Actually, the, the rights to sell that Godzilla is like 50 bucks a month. And I'm like, eh, I sold enough last year. I think I'll sit this one out. So, would you, had you have three of them last year, I think? Two, I think I had, four, I had three. Yeah, I had three. And all I know is that last one, I, I pimped that thing for you, didn't I? You I did. got that guy. You did. He, you did. He, was, he kept leaving and coming back, leaving. I was like, dude, you know you want it. Just buy the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah i was yeah, I'm, I'm glad i sold all those i still have my yeah. little one i don't think i'll i was gonna print another big one for myself and i'm like ah, i kind of have nowhere to put it why am i gonna do that but so all right you want to talk about music yeah man. let's, let's talk about that. music all right so this just kind of happened organically in the last episode we started talking about music from movies scores yeah. and soundtracks so we kind of just divided this up. We wanted to just get to, like we said earlier, our top five of each. And it's not a top as in the best, because I said it earlier, it's like it's hard. ones that mean something to us or like we like are great examples of what they are, that sort of thing. Um, and we're going to talk about compare lists back and forth. And so we're going to start with scores, right? Or are we starting with soundtracks? What did you say? Oh, I well, you said that there was the one that we, there's only one out of 10. that. We, okay. So I, let's start with scout soundtracks then, which is yeah. the one we have that overlaps. Yes. And you think is what? Cause I have both lists. What, what did it, you think it uh, was? You told me it was the crow. Well, you're supposed to pretend I didn't tell you. <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't know, Jason. Look at okay. Yeah. It was the crow. <laughs> so oh. this is the crow soundtrack so music your normal everyday music put into the movie that are part of the movie um alternative grunge yeah so let's talk about it why do you think the crow is a great soundtrack it's one of so first of all i mean you're we're very close in age um yes i'm a little older don't look it though um (laughs) the, the uh i was in college i believe when did Crow come out? 92, right? It came out 93, 90, I think. Somewhere in 93. there. 93. It was 93. Because and... I think that's the thing says 94. It might have been 94 when the music came out, was released. Gotcha. Um, but it was just one of those things, you know, Brandon, we all heard Brandon Lee died making it. And I remember going to the theater and it was at a theater by my college. Missy came with me. We went. Um, Dude, I was enthralled the entire time. The music in that movie, number one, it was big at the time, but it brought everything together. It, the, the costumes, the feel, the environment, the emotional, the tone, the, all of that, the mood, the music from that movie made it whole, and it made it for our generation. And I know there are other generations who like it or whatever, but I mean, when you look at it, and you've got Soundgarden and you got all those types of bands on there that are were so big, and still are music, still things that I listen to. Um, yeah, it's just it just it hits a home run, and it, it, there's I don't know if there's a bad song on that that soundtrack. So I'm gonna I I pulled the list of all the tracks for the soundtracks that we're gonna talk about, and The Crow is one of those rare movies that 
not rare movies, rare soundtracks that uses music I like outside of the movie. Like a lot, because I'm, I'm an old industri- industrial gothic kid who listens to weirdo music. The Crow had a lot of weirdo music in there, which was, you know, great to be like, oh my God, that's my band in a real movie. Like, like, so just real quick, starting off the, the cure machines of loving grace, stone temple pilots, nine inch nails, rage against the machine, violent femmes, Rollins band, helmet, Pantera for love. Not Lisa, my life with the thrill kill cult, which I absolutely love Jesus and Mary chain medicine, uh, Jane Cyberry. Awesome bands, like awesome bands. Yeah. The Cure. I mean, I think the standout track on there is is the Nine Inch Nails one because it's a cover oh, of Joy Division of doing Dead Souls, and an amazing song to begin with. And Nine Inch Nails like nailed it even better, and it fits and even, so well into the movie. And I can't even picture when it's playing. Like they show his feet as he's running. Yes, over the, I was. I was just game. thinking. It's when he's running, and it's yeah, yep, it's perfect. It's so. great. Oh. Speaking of the crow, the trailer the new, for the new tr- crow came out today. I haven't watched it yet. I watched I, it. I saw the still pictures and was like, eh. I saw that. Yeah. Eh. It doesn't look. I'm feeling a little better about it after watching the. I'll watch the trailer when trailer. we're done. I was thinking we could watch it on here, but we had so much going on. The other, like, Violent Femmes, I absolutely love. Mm hmm which I just saw they're coming, they're playing here over the summer. So I got to remind somebody, but again, after the flesh, my life with the thrill, I wish we could play the music here. And, and I don't, I haven't quite figured out how to do that. And maybe one day we will do something like that, but s- such great it's, bands, just great bands said, all around. I said, great sound guard. I didn't mean sound guard. I meant, uh, name them again. I, I know. It. Uh, you meant stone temple pilots. Yes, that's what I meant. Thank yeah, you had hey, that's, that's, that's an easy question. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, they, those two bands are, are the only band I, I would I could do without on this list is Rage Against the Machine. I absolutely despise, it, especially these days. Really? Oh well, I know. Yeah, that makes sense. They're Rage for the Machine. They are. Um, when you're, you're complaining all- about the man, and then you're playing in your billion dollar sports complex and you have to use your credit card from a certain bank to get a ticket to get in here da, 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 da. go f yourself that's it well, that's the only at least you're not forget. holding a grudge against a band that doesn't exist anymore uh, that's good oh they did break <laughs> something just happened right yeah they got together and then they fell apart again and yeah uh, yeah good tom good for them tom couldn't happen to a better band um you know the other thing like tom morello he's kind of when you listen to, to him talk he's very He's, he's, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to jaggy. Say he's a jag. Okay. A, as a it. Chicago guy, he's a jag. He's a just, yeah. and he's from, mm, he I just, okay. he seems very much like I'm better than you. Yes. And very like, much, so. Like very much so. Very so. much so. Very much so. And it's funny because I like, like, he has one song from his solo stuff that I really, really like. Yeah. And yeah. it, he's just, ugh. all right. All right. So the Crow was on both of our lists. So we have four left. You want to yes. give me your? You want to give me your next one? Uh, let's go with uh, Clerks. Clerks. All Clerks right. Talk to me about Clerks. Same thing. It's got a lot of music from, uh, you know, our our generation. They're, yeah. The, <laughs> I like the the. It's a very time period thing with movie clips inserted inside of the in between songs and all that. You know, it's. Something that you don't really see much anymore. So that's something I really wanted to talk about. Those are some of my favorite scores and soundtracks is when yes. they insert parts of the movie into the album. Yeah. Like it Kevin, really makes it. Kevin Smith does that in all of his. I have all, well, he didn't release Clerks 3 on a CD, but I have, I bought one and two. Um, and again, you know, like number two starts off with the talking heads. Um, number one is actually a song just called clerks by, yeah. uh, I got it right here. I just script the page. It is Brian. No, sorry. Love among freaks. Love among freaks. Okay. So I'll just go so, down the track list. We have Brian O'Hallahan, love among freaks doing the clerks, uh, kill the sex player girls against boys. No time for yeah. love. Jeff Anderson, Alice in chains got me wrong. Some other ones, super. You got Jesus Lizard on there. Jesus Lizard, fantastic. Yeah. 
uh, Stabbing Westward, Corrosion of Conformity, Seaweed, Soul Asylum, and Jason Mew. Jason doing a song. Jason Mew. Noise, noise, noise. <laughs> so, so again, I, have- I think in this, when you put this on the list, it started making me think of a movie idea for one an episode coming up. And okay. we could talk about that towards the end. Sure. Could- um, but yeah, there's a song on there called Chewbacca. And how can you go wrong with that? By Supernova. There you Chewbacca. Go. Yep. Whoa, Great. Whoa, I agree. Great soundtrack. Really good. What you got? All right. My next one. So my first one, Reservoir Dogs. Oh, I was that Reservoir close. Dogs. So both of us, this is the, uh, we did have a little overlap. We both picked a Tarantino movie. So I had a very hard time picking Pulp Fiction or Reservoir Dogs. And I went with Reservoir Dogs because it was the first. And it was the yeah. one that really made me, and it was one of those movies that adds, or soundtracks that adds part of the movies into that soundtrack. And it was Stephen Wright doing the, the radio guy. It really just like sets that off so well. Um, yeah. And it's classic music. It's not, you know, you got George Baker selection. Stephen Wright, again, is the guy doing the radio dude. Uh, Blue Swede, Stephen Ray, uh, Joe Tex, Quentin Tarantino, Edward Bunker. <laughs> like there's a, the Madonna speeches in there as part of it from the movie, which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, Sandy Rogers, Steeler's Wheel. Uh, and, and I think the song Coconut stands out to me because of what's oh, going yeah. on. Um, I think that the Coconut got a revival because of this movie oh absolutely for sure um little green bag which is like such a great soundtrack so reservoir dogs is on my five list what do you got well i'll 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 go with my uh soundtrack uh from tarantino then let's go with jackie brown there you go jackie brown uh, you know strawberry strawberry letter 22 the very first song on the album there it's it sets the tone and that's you know, say what you will. I know some people don't like his movies, and that's fine. You don't have to like his movie, but his soundtracks are untouchable. They're untouchable. Yep. You could, I mean, honestly, we could just do Pulp Fiction. We could do Reservoir Dogs. We could do Jackie Brown. We could just run through his movies. And I even have the soundtrack to uh, Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2 on CD. And they're just like little snippets of the, you know, like, eh, eh, yeah. like, like when they're fighting. So, so I, I don't know. I just, I, I have I, the hateful eight score and it is amazing. Love it. It's so good. good. Um, but with Jackie Brown, you got, like you were just saying, uh, bands cool that are on there, the brothers, Johnson, Bill Withers, Johnny cash, bloodstone, Pam Greer's doing something. Council cargo, like great, great stuff. Jackie Brown, great soundtrack. And it feels like I said, it feels like a Motown Album. yes it really yes when it, it does it's got that feel to it and it's fantastic yeah i don't think it's a bad song on that one either nope nope so. okay my second one and it's weird <laughs> i'll tell Shocked. you why it's not weird what it is return of the living dead okay as i got an email for this today that it was being re-released on vinyl and guess what i did i bought it instantly <laughs> from mondo so it is just so for people who have not seen return of the living dead you are missing out on one of the greatest movies ever made. And, and it scared the shit out of me as a kid. And just be, that first scene where they have the naked man running around and then they put the pickaxe in the back of his head terrified me. But yeah. I was like, Ugh, it was so gross. And the half dog barking. But yeah. the music in the movie is the most amazing, just punky soundtrack, punk soundtrack. And I love it so good and it fits the dirty kind of gross feel of the movie perfectly bands like the here's the it's not a very long soundtrack at all you have the cramps 45 grave tsol the flesh eaters roy erickson the damned tall boys jet blackberries ssq are, are the bands on there and they're just great punk bands it's just a great most of them and it just fits it fits with the movie so well and as you're watching it it's just rocking along and it's just fantastic so Return of the Living Dead is one of mine. Your next one. Uh, let's go with Baby Driver. So I was surprised by this choice because I've never seen this movie. Really? And then so, when I pulled up the tracks, there's a lot of songs on this soundtrack. It's two well, discs and a bonus track. Yeah. And if you don't, so if you haven't seen it, it the, the idea is he has tinnitus. 
and he's a he's a driver. His name's Baby, mm -hmm. but he's a driver to get criminals. He can time up his driving to the music that's playing, and he always plays music because of the tinnitus. So there's constantly music playing in the movie, um, and he, he can drive according to the music. It's it's really good. Now the guy who plays Baby has had some issues in his personal life with. Okay, we don't want to talk about that. As teachers, we deal with. Oh no, uh, that's all I gotta say. But um, so oh, he's no. kind of persona non, non grata um as a result but the music in this there is a and you you can i mean the the queen's you know everybody knows with queen well here's uh, two in a row you got the damned on this was damned was just in my last one yeah. uh i'll just i can read through it the yeah. you have john spencer blues explosion bob and earl jonathan richmond and the modern lovers google renee the beach boys carla thomas cashmere stage band the damned commodores t-rex ben Beck Hansen, Incredible Bongo Band, <laughs> Detroit Emeralds. What else? I'm skipping down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Sam and Dave, Brenda Howley, Blur, Awesome, Golden Earring, Young MC, which I love. I haven't heard a Young MC in a long time. Queen, Sky yeah. Ferra, Simon and Garfunkel. Like a really great mix of just. Yep. So I, this movie has been on my list to watch, and now it like definitely yeah. is. It's, it is a good movie. Just, a, again, enjoy the art, not the artist because like i said he's got some issues but he uh this it's a great film dude it's who's, a great film who's danger mouse the band i don't it's a it's a guy he was one if i'm and i'm not 100 percent sure but he was like remember that uh he and another guy the guy with the big head looks like charles gnarles barkley okay oh okay oh yeah he's, he's part of gnarles barkley dude did you watch danger mouse when you were a kid the, the cartoon oh, yeah with, with cool. penfold call yeah. damn i love it it's one of my favorite <laughs> things. <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> Love that if, show. If you grew up when you were our age, you had to watch it. Oh, that, Danger Mouse is so good. Okay. Underdog, Danger Mouse. What you got next, bud? All right, my next one. And this is really only for... I mean, there's really good songs in here. It's really good. But this one holds a special place in my heart for one, one reason specifically. The movie is Pump Up the Volume. Oh, Christian Slater and the song is everybody knows by Leonard Cohen performed by concrete blonde and part of this as a cover, but it gave me, and I got, I got goose and I'm not kidding. I just got goosebumps thinking about it. Great. Leonard Cohen is like one of like my favorite all time yeah. musician. And when he was, there's only been two musicians that have passed away where I'm like bummed out, genuinely like bummed out about, and he was one of them. Most of the time you're like, okay, yeah whatever they pick that's sad but but this one like when leonard cohen died i was like man that was a guy that for me personally has meant so much musically what i the stuff i like folk music and just the somber seriousness of what he sings about sometimes and this every time christian slater in the movie came on it starts with everybody knows and it's I, and i might do this so one day you might end up seeing it it's the one tattoo i want and it's everybody knows on there dot 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 on my forearm because it has a lot to do with, for me personally, a lot of stuff. So, I get it. but, but the other stuff that's on here is you have, everybody knows with them. You have, uh, Soundgarden, Terry Date, Sonic Youth, Nick Sansano, like just cowboy junkies above the law, bad brains and Henry Rollins, which kick out the J bad brains. Have you, have you ever seen bad brains live? I've, I've, I've seen them with uh, in living I'm color sorry. play, like one of the best shows living, ever. Living uh, color is fantastic. Yeah, uh, and and another musician like that means a ton to me as a goth kid. Peter Murphy's on that song, and it's like former singer of Bauhaus, current because they still oh, tour once around. I know who's also has a, like some drug issues going on, but man, pump up the volume. And I remember seeing it in the theater and just being like, that song. I got to know who that song. Like, what is that song? And then I went home and looked it up and I was like, oh my God. And then I bought like a best of Leonard Cohen and I'm playing songs. And my mom starts singing along in the background and I turn around and I'm like, what? How do you know this? And she's like, yeah, that's duh. <laughs> okay. He, his voice was one you can't imitate. No. His style is you couldn't imitate. If, if you've ever seen him live. I, and never I, got I to. Never got to. Well, I, I didn't get to either, but there's yeah. lots of videos of his oh, concert. Yeah, yeah. About he was always in a suit. 
he had a top hat on, like not a top hat, Fedora. but a hat on, classy. <laughs> yep. You know, um, just man, you know, and his voice is haunting. It really is. It is. And it's man. So pump up the volume for me, one of the greatest soundtracks of all time. Uh, your next one? Well, but probably you know, it's one that I I will say probably is my favorite soundtrack of all time. And it's Purple Rain. And I'm not going out on a limb there. I know a lot of people like, Whoa, but people don't understand. Again, it's for me, Prince is so important musically to me. I saw him seven times. Okay. Concert. So you're one of those Prince and, guys. All right. <laughs> yeah, dude, I have, yeah. I have 35 bootleg CDs. I have, I have all the release stuff. I have stuff that was released in Germany that wasn't here. I'm I'm that guy. Okay. I I have a buddy of mine. Uh, I haven't spoken to him in a long time, but he and I went to a concert in Cleveland together, and he found a clean copy from the soundboard online and burned a copy of that concert that we were at for me. I mean, oh, that's awesome. I, yeah. So, um, there's just I know Purple Rain is you know his song and all that, um. But there's so many just let's go crazy. Um, so since you're such a Prince guy, explain yeah. this to me. So when I was looking up the soundtrack, like the, the songs that are on there, there's a, a November 7th, 1983 configuration and a March 23rd, 1984 configuration. And it has different songs on it. What are the different songs? Because he did do that. I did, so, can you tell? He did that a lot. That's so, the problem. Darling Wiki. It looks like it's missing the song Wednesday. Okay. And then on the, so the eight, original eight, one, eight. it's missing When Doves Cry. Okay. Like, so the. Yeah, that's what's missing. Oh, and so Father's eight, Song is on one, and Purple Rain is on the other. So 84 must be on the Purple Rain one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the one that came out. See, he, he would come up with albums and then he would just dump the album or change like uh get off was not supposed to be on diamonds and pearls it was supposed to be a song called horny pony so he's just <laughs> he has so much he just would flip flop until things fit so okay all right so that makes sense i yeah. am not a prince person at all i always okay. i never and i'm not saying i still i respect like he absolutely is one of the greatest musicians of all time like i i see that just not my stuff and so i never and I, I think maybe at some point, I know we have records upstairs. I should just sit and listen to one of them because I think as a kid, I was always like, oh, that's that guy in MTV. Like, that's kind of how I like, because yeah. maybe being two years younger, I was in a, two years doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're like, you're in like high school and I'm in junior high and something else, like, I don't know, I, it, but, ab and I get it. There's people that just like you absolutely love them. And I, I understand yeah. why. It's just not it's, something I ever got into. And the thing is, his live shows, I, I, I can't even begin to tell you how good his, he was live. His albums are okay. His live shows were phenomenal. And, yeah. you know, I, when he died, it crushed me. It did. It crushed me. Yeah. I, I have, I, they, now they're, you know, the estate, you know, he's got this Elvis thing going on um they're releasing special albums i have I, I, I'm, I'm an idiot you know it's like buying that special edition of the uh, creature that i did from x plus that has one head but it's 15 extra dollars um <laughs> the <laughs> i'm buying eight cd sets of uh sign of the times and all i mean i'm getting yeah so but the cool thing is a lot of the bootleg songs and albums that I've had over the years weren't really clean and good. They're cleaning all those up that I've had, and I'm getting really nice sound quality versions of songs that I've heard for years that other people didn't even know about. So, That's awesome. But, yeah. I, I'm, I, got, and I, I'm a, like, the bootleg stuff is really cool that people do that. It is. Kind yeah. of thing. For people who've watched Scott and I's list of favorite movies of all time, this should come as no surprise. My favorite movie of all time is also my favorite soundtrack of all time. And that is Rushmore, the Wes Anderson movie. And it kind of ties in this. I'm going to break the rules a slight bit here. 
it kind of ties with his other movie bottle rocket which was his first film because they actually share some of the music in there now this is one of those that crosses between it kind of straddles the line because it has original music kind of mixed in with music for the movie uh that they found but rushmore is my absolute i will listen i could listen to it this is a desert island album for me because it just it fits so well with the film and i love all of wes anderson's soundtracks and the music he picks are offbeat they're songs that are curated perfectly i think and i just i want to go through some of the bands that are in there um and a lot of them people might not even know, <laughs> but it's sorry. Mark Mothersbaugh, the Kinks. Oh, I'm sorry. Mark's Mothersbaugh. Let me take this out because I'm going to go through just the bands because the I'm going to take out the original music that Wes Anderson, what they did for Bottle Rocket, Wes Anderson, and another guy basically just sat around with a bunch of weird instruments and made tiny little tinkle songs like to do things. So that's part of it. But gotcha. the other bands, you have the Creation Unit 4 plus 2, the Kinks. Chad and Jeremy, Cat Stevens, The Who, uh, Zoot Sims, The Ives Mortland, Cat Stevens, John Lennon, which, oh, Yoko, the John Lennon song is just, I love that song. I absolutely, I, I sing, this is one of those songs, I will sit this album, I will sing along to every song in the car at the top of my lungs. Cause I just, yeah. they're all like, so many of them are just kind of like feel good music, which I normally do. Cause as Spike knows. I love horrible and dark and depressing things, but Dude. listening to like, I love Cat Stevens. This music, this movie made me love Cat Stevens or Yusuf Islam, which is his, his name now. Um, I, and the kinks, it introduced me to the kinks and the who, which normally were two bands. I would like, Oh, that's my dad's music. I'll never listen to that. And it made me appreciate bands that I normally, and that's what I really like about some of the, both of our lists is it. And it's the good thing I think about, music from movies it introduces you to stuff that you normally wouldn't find and you're like oh man what's that song that's pretty good so my number one of all time is rushmore and rushmore is one of those that my wife and i quote all the time where when things are going sideways or whatever we're doing stuff we'll look at each other and go get your head out of your ass dad (laughs) one of the the best scenes ever where the two kids are in the back seat and they're yelling at their dad bill murray and he tries to hit him in the back it's it's hilarious it's a great scene my original cd and my vinyl (laughs) here's my bottle rocket cd here's my reservoir dogs this is one the next ones are coming up this there we go but just so you know like i still just real quick things that i i've bought recently the soundtrack to the void Turbo Kid soundtrack is fantastic. If you, dude, have you oh, seen Turbo oh, Kid? Oh, okay, okay, you got to watch Turbo Kid. The one, <laughs> I think, one of the best things that's happened on TV in a long time, Chernobyl. Yeah, the music in Chernobyl is so flipping good. I got this not too long ago, The Bride of Frankenstein on vinyl. Like, just so there's a like a resurgence. If you really like collecting vinyl, there's a few companies out there, Waxwork Records, Mondo, that do a really good job of making great vinyl and amazing like packaging like to, mm-hmm. for like a collector if you're a fan of that music. so yeah, I, my I daughter highly likes recommend. vinyl my daughter like she has vinyl like she has a vinyl purple rain and oh perfect I, 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 I think we do too actually I'm, I'm almost positive we do so all right you ready we're doing scores which is orchestrated music and not original like not song not your normal song so yeah. let me get down to that list Boom. All right, you go first. Well, I'm going to go with the obvious one for someone of my generation, the Star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah. Um, Star I Wars. mean, just the opening horns going off. Um, I, can, I was five years old, and my grandpa took me to the mall to see it. And then my other grandfather in Pennsylvania took me to the mall to see it because um, it was so big. You know, everyone yeah. wanted to see it, so we would just go see it. All, and, and you couldn't see it enough. I was five, and I still remember sitting there, and the horns go off. And then and the next thing, the the music is building and Darth Vader comes through that door, you know, and I wanted to run, you know, and it was, it was fantastic. <laughs> and, um, I have all of the soundtracks on CD, actually. I even have the special editions that are like two or three CDs each. I, I, I just love, I love, I actually almost cheated and just said 
all of John Williams. You could, because, and then you know what? That is fair because yeah, I have one just like that. So yeah, I, say that I almost did, but I do I, it. No, no, I do it because it kind of that absolutely do that because I have one like I said just like that. I don't I, hold on. I all those Star that, Wars ones, anything John Williams, Star Wars. Yeah, you're talking Jaws. You're talking yep. um because he did Jaws, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he did Jaws. He did Indiana Jones. He did, you know, he did he did our childhood, and so yes. I was very, you know, let's just did he do he did Superman too, didn't he? I think he did seventy eight. Look it up. I can't pull that up. That's great. I'll look it up right now. Um, I think he did, which would kind of mess up my list. Oh, spoiler alert! Because <laughs> I well, do. I, while you're doing that, I could talk about our lists and compare them a little bit. Our lists yeah. are very different, and. I, people are going to be mad at me. You ready? Yeah. I can't listen to Star Wars without the movie being on. And I, for me, and this could be like a me thing. And I wonder if, and comment below if you're like this. I, for me, like there's soundtracks that I could listen to all day long. Well, not soundtracks, but scores that I could listen to mm -hmm. and not see them as music from that movie. Like Star Wars, I can't separate the movie from the music. So it's constantly Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars in my brain. And, it, I, and I, I'm not saying it's bad. It's a, amazing. And you're absolutely right. Greatest sco like, sc score of all time, probably. Yeah. Like there's, you know, and all of his music is like that. But it's so iconic. And I think that's where like our lists are a little different. It's so iconic that it's hard to separate out for me. And that's just a me thing. And it probably is just a me thing. Well, no, I mean, it's, I, I was going by the scores that I was affected by, you know yeah. what I mean? Oh I, yeah, like, for sure. And that's so like, I, like I said, I almost, I'll just, let's just go with star Wars for now. Cause like I said, I've got another one of his in there that we spoiled already, but um, you want to go, you what? Let's do two. Just, do, go just, straight yeah, to that Superman, one. Yeah, 78. I mean, again, I remember going to the theater with my mom and I remember the theater and I remember getting in the back of my car or, she had a station wagon you know back then we didn't wear seat belts it was like a free-for-all yeah. so i remember getting in the back and laying on my stomach and flying all the way home you know it's just it, it made me a, that made me a superman fan and the music like you were saying you can't pull that music from the movie and if you listen to that music you are watching the movie again and i think that's what makes a great score is it it makes you relive those moments um yeah. And, and there's only one on there that I can't stand one song. And it's the one where he takes Lois Lane flying and she's, they're talking over it. She's like, is it my dreaming? Is this, and I just want to I just, I think just get rid of that one. I'd be happy, but what am I going to do? So, um, but yeah, I, the John Williams and, and star Wars and Superman 78, I think it's put me on the, the way of being the super fan of things that I am. Yeah. So that's awesome. And it's great to hear that. Like that. That's why that's cool. Yeah. Uh, my first one is the road. Uh, and the, this is where I have to cheat as well. And it's Nick cave and Warren Ellis. And they do the most amazing scores to movies. So real quick, the movies that I'm talking about is, and it was hard for me to even pick one of these. I'm just going to say three right now. The Road, which is the Cormac McCarthy book, the movie. And, I read the book. Yeah. And, <laughs> and um, The Proposition, which is, if you have not seen the, everybody do yourself a favor, please go watch The Proposition. Very hard movie to watch, but one of the best movies ever made. And then another one <laughs> is, this is a long title, The Assassination of Jesse James by the co Coward Robert Ford. And so Great. they did the music to all three of these. And it's just, I love Nick Cave. I love Warren Ellis as the bad seeds and all that, but they are something special. And when it comes to doing music for movies, so it's just, a lot of them are so haunting and like the time, like in, especially in the road, when it gets horrible, when horrible things are happening on screen, the music just kind of gives you that tension of like, it just, it sets the tone perfectly in those films and i just i love it and it's one of those things that i can listen to 
and not even worry about it's from a movie. It's just to me, it's the like some of the best music ever created. Nice. Yeah, I'll, uh, I, I the the assassination of Jesse J. That's a great movie. Oh, that movie's so good. That's good oh <laughs> my so god. Good. And and yeah. And he just, even in that one, he does a couple original like songs for okay. for it, like as in like Nick Cave kind of songs, and they're kind of focused on it. Oh man, love all those. Okay. So yeah. I'll go to my second one. Yes, since we did two, and we're gonna go back to the crow. And this is not the crow soundtrack, but the sco the crow score. Okay. Yeah. by uh graham ravel and he is an industrial guy from way back one of the original industrial music pioneers and again has parts from the movie in it like little clippets like snips of like a dialogue from the film and it's just i it's again one of the best scores ever. love it Dude, haunting I, I, mean, I was and, gonna you'll say, notice this is both of ours i like kind of the creepy music like the like the 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 real swelling up of just like oh i don't know how to like i get it i do i I, like i'm trying to it's hard i wish we could play music (laughs) and not get in trouble if you really like movies i mean seriously like movies i think we both do obviously i think you have to have a love of music as well i do because for sure have you ever seen like horror films without the music Uh, i've ever seen there it's was terrible. no what there was scary, something recently is... that had no music in it and it worked i can't remember what movie it was it was like just the movie and well it, and normally it doesn't normally you're I, like you need that extra tension i taught a film and lit class for a while and it's one of those classes uh electives whatever and like where you'll we you watch movies and break them down like novels and I would talk about the effects of music. It was one of the lessons that we did. And there used to be a clip, and I can't find it anymore. If I can, I'll send it to you. Maybe you could put the, I'll, I'll, I've, I've searched. It's the ending of Halloween 2, where he gets his eyes shot out, Michael Myers, and he's swinging the knife. Mm-hmm. And they play it with the music, the dun dun you know, the from John Carpenter. And it, you're just, you, get, you know, and then there's nothing. And it's just like, oh. You know, and it's a, and then they were like the clown music. Du, 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 du. <laughs> and they were putting all these different things on it, and it completely changes every feeling yeah. and tone. It's it's crazy how effective music is with that kind of stuff. For sure, that's a we yeah. If you can find that, or I'll look for a link, maybe. Oh, yeah. Okay, your next one. I'm gonna go with the one I mentioned uh, last episode, Interstellar. Um, right. Hans Zimmer. Um, again, it's one of those. It's surprising how many songs there are. I want to say how many songs are there? 30 songs. There's 30 songs. And they're always in the background. They're never front and in you. Um, You've seen Interstellar, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the... uh, I think it's one of the greatest movies ever for me. I really do. I I can watch that movie over and over and over again. And it's, it's like reading a piece of literature for me. And I think the music from this makes it that way because it's like i said it's never like pounding in your face it's always like right back here yeah and being into the scenes of what's going on and it's just it's fantastic Hans zimmer is a, a genius as far as i'm concerned he really is there and so. that's and that's what comes across a lot of times like i i'm gonna spoiler alert i have no lord of the rings on here none well that's because well and because and i love howard shore i think he's an amazing like but to me, again, it goes, it's not something I want to listen to because it's, for me, it, it's so tied into the movie. I don't want to pull it out for me. Like I want it there, which well, is, isn't it just one song though? And it just like the movies, no. it just goes on and on no. and on. And no, no. All right. We're not arguing. We're not putting Lord of the Rings on there, but it's, it's okay. My next one, Interstellar's great. Oh man, that's good. Okay. Conan the Barbarian. Yeah. I'm going to mess you up know, his last name. I knew you were going to pick that. Basil Polidorus. This was one of the first soundtrack scores, scores I ever bought. And it's just, you know, yeah. one of those, I'm a barbarian. This is the music. We're going to kill <laughs> stuff. And it's so <laughs> perfect. It's so perfect. And I just, that, 
Conan the Barbarian. And I know people mentioned it in the comments last time. It's it's one of the best movie scores of yeah, all time. I, it's and I there's agree. not much to say about it other than it's one of the best. <laughs> like it's so dang good. All right, next. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, the recent Zack Snyder's uh, version of Man of Steel. Okay, explain and, that one to me. Well, it's funny because I um uh, let me I'm gonna pull it up here on my uh on my uh, Spotify, and I actually bought the CD. I have the CD, another Hans Zimmer one. Um, and I we went to Hilton Head right after this movie came out and i had the cd downloaded on my ipod back then ipod back then go figure ipods and uh i was listening to it i i and i was falling asleep and waking up and, and it was still i just had it on loop and replay and then i took over driving and i was like missy why don't you listen to this same thing she was blown away by it it's it's more than a music soundtrack a movie soundtrack it's it's there's something about it and it's not just because it's superman that's why I bought it, but there's something like really powerful about the music. And I agree it, with you. <laughs> yeah. I really agree with you. I can't. I can't I'm one of me. the rare few that actually really liked that movie. I, oh, I love it, it. And and the music in there gives that it's a, there's a lot of like crescendo to so a lot of the music. I think I noticed where it builds and it's yes. kind of, it fits with the movie because it's, Superman building to Superman. So it kind of gives it that he's not quite Superman yet. And so you don't have that quite full over the top of the music and it's, it's subtle. And I, I, it, I, it works. It works really, really well. And honestly, it works as just a good classical music album as well. You don't, you don't even have to have the movie. You don't even have to imagine the movie um, to, to be listening to it. It's just really good and it's, it's strong. So yeah, there you go. Okay. Uh, now this was, and I can't, it was so hard for me to narrow down. I'm narrowing it down to this. And I, this is probably my number two of all time. Okay. Akira. The score slash soundtrack to Akira, the anime. And if, if the, the composer, <laughs> want to watch me slaughter a name? <laughs> yeah. Or listen to me slaughter a name? Yeah, the composer is <laughs> Gaino or Geno. Yama Shigomi, wait, Yama Shirogumi, Yama Shirogumi. I think Nailed I'm it. close. I think I'm close. <laughs> That's, but holy crap, is it good? You have instruments like orchestrated orchestra, like like pounding in there. You have flutes, tiny little noises, big pounding drums, creepy weird stuff happen. It is one of and just. Oh, 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 like that kind of like just amazing amazing music and if people have never seen akira please watch akira but please go you can any of these that we've mentioned you can go and find and listen to on youtube please go listen to their akira score it is amazing and it just yeah. i have a, like all of these mostly i have on my when i have random like a song will pop up when i'm playing music and anytime the akira stuff po- stay comes up i let it play because it's just so dang good uh batman 1989 uh score danny elfman and uh who danny elfman if if people aren't aware i'm sure that most people who listen to us and watch this know but he was basically the soundtrack for tim burton it's basically the batman theme now the no 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 gone it's now this and it was this for the batman the animated series when um uh Ben Affleck shows up in the Justice League's X or uh, the, the, I don't know if it's in the Zack Snyder cut or not. I'll have to watch it again. I think it I'll is. have to find four hours, but I know in the version that was released by the other guy, I won't say his name, uh, when he shows up, it's in that version too. And and so it's just become iconic and, and it's become ingrained in pop culture and same thing though. I, mean, I think, you know, a lot of mine are very much comic booky in a way. Um, yeah. I think that's during my formative years, dude. Uh, and still, you know, I mean, I collect comics. I mean, I freaking got a Superman shirt. Um, I, I just, I, I, 
you were you were you know wandering in the sitting in your parents' basement trying to cut yourself so you could feel, and I was you know <laughs> lying around my backyard. Yeah, pretty much, <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Well, all right, last one. What you got? Okay, like? the last one, and I've had this a very long time too. Make sure. Yep, still works. Still there. Hardware. Have you ever seen Hardware? I remember the movie kind of. I know I saw it. So the composer is Simon Boswell. He also did a movie with, the the director is Richard Stanley. And he did a movie after this called Dust Devil. And the music for that is equally as good and is pretty much tied, but I'm narrowing it down to Hardware, which is mostly electronic, robotic sounding, because it's about a killer robot. And so, but it also has some songs it has ministry on there public image limited kind of mixed in to these original amazing electronic pieces that are put in there and then it also has clips from the movie lemmy plays a radio and a radio guy or no no not lemmy lemmy's in there being interviewed iggy pop is the like like from reservoir dogs being the the radio voice oh, radio. Okay. so it's iggy pop talking about music that he's going to play sprinkled in and throughout you got lemmy speaking in there from motorhead and you have just this fantastic mix of electronic music and noises. And it's almost like a noise album at times with just really crazy stuff going on. But it's so good. And if people haven't seen Hardware, I love Hardware. Like, <laughs> best movies. I, I, it's, it's a Jason movie. My, my, one of my favorite bands is Fields of the Nephilim for goth people. And Carl McCoy, the singer of that band, makes a cameo in this movie because he's friends with the director. And I didn't know until later. I'm like, oh, wait, that's that's Carl McCoy. So hardware is my final one. And we want to thank you all for dealing with <laughs> and, and sitting through our favorite music stuff. We will do more stuff like this on and off as we go. But really. And hey, seriously, give us some other, you know, give yeah. us your top. Give us, yeah, give us the, your top. Let us know because honestly, I there's sometimes you're so ingrained in a movie and, and you don't catch the music and the music affects you so much. And I like when people say, Oh, did you that's a great movie, but did you you know, and so Yeah. Let us know. Yeah, for sure. Okay, speaking of music. Ah, <sighs> Brian, Brian, Brian. We have two movies to review. And the first one has to deal with music. Whiplash. Whiplash. This was your choice, and I am blaming you for my trauma. What? I'll explain in a minute. Oh, wait, I know. You went to art school. Okay. Yeah. No, well, no, this close. But keep going. All right, Whiplash. I'm going to put this picture up. Whiplash, you want to give us the premise? Uh, you got a young man, Andrew, gets accepted to uh, one of the best music schools. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it doesn't matter. Just a conservatory, basically. And he's in one of the lower level bands and uh, he's practicing by himself and just beating away, beating away. And the the director, conductor of the best band in the school hears him and talks to him. And his name, he's played, is Fletcher. And uh, he's played by J.K. Simmons, maybe one of the best actors to ever walk the earth. And uh, at least I think so. Um, This was the movie that opened my eyes to him outside of the television show Oz, where he plays a Nazi (laughs) rapist. (laughs) I did not see that. Okay. (laughs) No, you never saw Oz? No. It's a no show. Oh, man. Uh, I'm I'm rewatching it right now. Anyhow, um, he uh, he's very demanding, hardcore. you know, he demands perfection. Not only does he demand perfection in their performances, but in practice, you you can't mess up in practice. You know, he'll throw things at you. He'll cut, you know, the, the whole reason your mom doesn't talk to you anymore is because you suck and that kind of stuff. And um, very old school. And uh, basically he brings this kid in because he's not happy with his drummer. And he, Andrew pushes the drummer out and uh, takes over for a show and does a great job and they take first place and they're uh in the 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 right where they want to be all the time he never loses all that and then Fletcher brings in another drummer to push Andrew and uh Andrew of course reacts the way any 18 year old would to <laughs> being abused and 
and pushed around and basically um, at one point tackles Fletcher in the middle of a stage at a concert because he's just had enough. Um, they both, uh, he gets kicked out of school and Fletcher gets fired and Fletcher then uh, brings him in later. I, I think it was like six months or a year later. Yeah. Um, Fletcher is, he receives Fletcher's work working at a jazz bar and he goes in, he just looks, he turns and walks away. And Andrew is stopped by Fletcher who says, Hey, I've started this little professional band on the side. It's my way back. And, you know, you, I need a drummer. Why don't you come in? And Andrew hasn't touched the drums in a year. He's been traumatized by, by it and gets pulled out, puts his drums back together, starts working and gets it. And when they show up, they go to do the big show at the end. And Fletcher has changed all the music to fuck with Andrew because he, as he says right before they started, I know it was you who's talked bad about me and got me fired. What do you think I am? And they go up there and they start playing and he can't play. And obviously he can't play. He doesn't know them song. So he turns and he walks off. His dad gives him, Paul Reiser's his dad. Paul Reiser gives him a big hug and everything. And Finally, he's just like, you know what? F this guy. He turns around. He walks back on stage, sits down, and Fletcher's talking. And as Fletcher's turning around to kind of start the next song, he's surprised that Andrew's there. Andrew has basically said, I'm going to be what I want to be, and you can't control it. And he just talks to the other guys, follow me, and he just boom, goes off. In the last, what, 10 minutes, I'd say, is just straight music, wouldn't you say? And Straight dumb, drum solo. Fantastic. And yeah, and the last image is J.K. Simmons' eyes. And the reason is, is J they keep telling the story of uh, Charlie Parker, right? Yeah. And how, I think it was Charlie Parker who uh, wasn't good enough, whatever, and his conductor threw a symbol at him and almost decapitated him and all this sort of stuff. But he just kind of, instead of quitting, he just bared down and he became the best. And Fletcher said, I've never had that guy. I push and I push and I push and I've never had that. And it turns out that Andrew was that guy all the time. He just had to finally decide that I'm going to do it. I, I'm going to do what I've always wanted to do. So um, I love jazz music. And I, I, the first time I saw this movie, I, I want to say I was in the theaters, but I might be wrong. But I just remember being enthralled and also, after rewatching this, I wanted to call my daughter, who's in the conservatory at Baldwin Wallace, and say, "Are any of these sons of bitches treat me like this?" <laughs> Destroy them. So, um, I, I I think it's a powerful, powerful movie. I really do. I think it's a powerful movie, and the music is phenomenal. Um, and also, the guy who played Andrew learned to play the drums for the movie. He was actually playing. Which well, that was going to be my first question: Who was playing the drums even during that solo? holy shit drum. that's holy what i was shit. That's, yeah um yeah that's crazy isn't it he, and he he was the reed richards in that crappy fantastic oh yeah movie. oh yeah. yeah yeah he's been in a lot of like weird like little parts and stuff yeah all right uh, so, all right brian tell me about how i traumatize you and i have to pay for your therapy yeah dude so we've talked about our social anxiety a little bit yeah in the yeah. past My cause that I've kind of narrowed it down was my band teacher in junior high. And I, when you suggested this movie, I had no idea what this was about at all, at all. And so the first five minutes go by and I'm like, I can't watch this. I can't watch <laughs> this. This guy was my band teacher was wow. just like this in middle school, in middle school, well, not middle school, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. He would, this part where he's in there screaming in his face while I'm tooting away on my clarinet, that was my band leader. That was my instructor. Oh. And I was last chair. I sucked. I was terrible at it. I had just, and I'm just, I'm getting nervous even talking about it. I had just, it was fourth grade and it started out. I told the story. I was telling Jamie, cause I started watching it and I went upstairs and I'm like, I can't watch this fucking movie. <laughs> it's going to be so hard. And I go, so I wanted to play saxophone. And so when they would go to the, the elementary schools and the band leader and they would bring all their instruments and you would try them like, oh, we think you're good at this one. I'm like, I want to try saxophone. 
I have never touched a saxophone in my life. So I didn't know how it worked. I didn't know like anything. So with, for people who don't know, there's a reed. You can't right. bite down on the mouthpiece with the reed. So right. I put it in my mouth and kind of bit and blew weird. And he goes, no, that's not for you. Try a clarinet. And I go, okay. And I learned, I'm like, oh, you don't bite down on this. You just kind of, and he goes, oh, right. you're much better at that. You're clarinet. And I'm like, what? No, <laughs> no. I want to use saxophone. <laughs> you and all the girls. <laughs> right. I'm like, no. So for the next three years, I am berated by this guy. And it's not just me. So the part that got me, that got me to walk upstairs and go, I can't watch this. Is he threw in the beginning when he throws the chair, yeah. he would throw chairs all the time, throw chairs, the little conducting baton, this thing, the trumpets were straight ahead of him. Would whip that thing right at the trumpets at least once a time and would scream. His face would get so red. And there was so, I had braces at the time. I had gotten braces between starting band and not. So my teeth hurt all the time. Oh. So I'm trying to play clarinet with hurting teeth. I'm last chair. It's 7 a.m. before school. I'm like, I don't want to be here. This sucks. I hate this. So I'm pretending to play. And he looks at me, he walks up. Just like in this movie where he gets right in that kid's face. He's like, are you playing? Are you playing? You're faking like yelling, like screaming at me, screaming at the time. And I'm like, I can't do this anymore. And eventually I just quit band. I tried playing guitar for a little bit. Couldn't get into it. And ever since then, I just, I'm like, Ugh. I hate And so watching this movie brought back and there was my other person would be my first grade teacher who was very much. It made me afraid to talk to people. Like, cause she was so abrasive and so just like non-caring. Yeah. And this guy was so, it made me like fear performing in front of people. And like, I had to get over that later on because of band stuff I was in and like my, the music band I was in, but yeah, no, not that <laughs> when I was in infinity interrupt band, we have two songs, two albums on Spotify, go check them out. Um, right. but it just, there were so many parts of this that just made me my skin crawl. Cause I was like, that was me. That was me. I wanted to tackle that motherfucker and, and just beat the crap out of him. I went how many times? And I don't, and it, there is a part at the end, like you said, when they show his eyes where he's such a monster, he's, he's the monster. He's such a monster in this movie. And it, it made me think of Dr. Frankenstein. He's been trying all these years to find this thing to mold. And he doesn't care who he hurts, what he does until he gets his reward he made this musician. I made this. And you can see at the end where he starts to back up and look as he's drumming away. He's like, I made that. That's me. That's not that guy's talent. That's my talent. When it's like, screw you. All you're doing is sitting there screaming at somebody, which really like to, and again, musicians could probably come back and say, yes, they're important. But that band leader that I had always made me think you don't even need a conductor. What for? Everyone can tap their toe. I get it. I know when I'm supposed to play, if I'm reading the music, what do you need this guy for? And this made, and it just, it, Oh, it made me so mad. Not mad. Just it brought me back to fourth grade and I just wanted to just curl up in a ball every day. And I remember like my dad driving me to school because he would drive me in because we had to be there early for band and he would drop me off and I'd just be like, God damn it. I don't want to go. Like, I know what's about to happen. I'm going to get yelled at for a fucking 45 minutes. I don't want to do this. And that's what this movie was. And I think it's an amazing movie. I really, really do. It just hit way too close to home so yeah. one thing i do want to pick out is how it's shot there are some really good just shots in this movie and i think paul riser did an excellent job as the dad in here too there's a shot of him looking through the door when he sees his son doing that drum solo the look of pure just like like oh my god my son's amazing like like and it's the exact opposite look that uh Fletcher gives where it's like, that's mine. That's mine. Yep. Whereas he's like, Oh my God, my son's amazing. Like yep. that there, you can see the difference there. And then like, there's the parts where, Oh, I just, there's the parts where, where he's drumming and it just looks like pain, like just sheer well, pain. I mean, his hands are bleeding. Yes. And it's torn and shredded because he would practice for hours and hours and they show him practicing his bleeding and he would just jam his hands in ice buckets. And pull him out and just go again until he could once he started feeling it jump yeah it was it was not it's not as much as he loved it you could see how someone could learn to hate it too yes yeah. 
And yeah. this shot here, it's him in a symbol and it's people center is not good. Center is not interesting. When you center something, it's not interesting. And a lot of the shots are kind of off center. Like you have the symbol down here in the corner and his head up there. It forces your eye to look around. And I thought when there's the shots of the stage and all you see is the stage like this big on the screen, like, and the rest is just black. It makes, it makes that, that feeling of being alone and you have to be like, it's you. Like it just, it was like, beautiful. Ah, it was a really good movie. Um, on, like I said, I, I saw it a long time ago, and when we talked about music, I was like, I got the perfect music movie, and yeah. it. Uh, this is one of those that you can't watch a lot. It's you're not going to turn it on and be like, hey, I think I'll watch Whiplash. No, I don't think I'll ever watch it again. Honestly, I don't think I, I will never watch this. Well, I mean, you have reasons for that, but uh, yes. I mean, <laughs> the person who loves jazz music and, yes. and all that. I mean, I have a, on my Spotify. I've had the Whiplash soundtrack, and I'll put okay. it on doing stuff like build a model sometimes i'll have it on and that um i I will watch it again but it's not something you you have to be in the mood to yes. watch it you cannot just go i'm gonna go have a good day today <laughs> and this is how and for people have like it, it's so abusive the dude cr gets hit crashes his car runs to the performance bloody and bleeding and still oh, like God. forces himself to perform and it's the same reason I, and don't take this the wrong way it's it made me not like coaches either because when I tried out, because I went from being in band, I'm like, okay, I'll try sports, <laughs> right? Uh, I'll try sports. And I tried out for football freshman year. I made it. I started on the A team. I had never played football in my life. No one told me the rules. <laughs> I didn't know the rules of football. I didn't know what a false start was. I didn't know what a legal man downfield was. None of that. I thought it was a mosh pit. <laughs> That's what I thought <laughs> so i don't know how many times <laughs> i got screamed at for doing the wrong thing but it's because no one ever told me yeah. i was just like that guy lined up across from me i'm gonna kill him <laughs> and so, like yeah. i would chase this dude i was ch i got a, a touchdown called back because i chased a guy down the field to try to tackle him and we scored a touchdown and it got a legal man downfield had to pull it back the very next play i'm a little white guy freshman <laughs> but i was a fat white guy so i was on the line offense the defensive end was probably six three six seven like big dude black guy i'm a little white dude i go i gotta block that guy like what <laughs> and so i jump up and I, I hit him once i bounce off of him as i'm laying on the ground i look up i see him my quarterback has his back to this guy the dude just spears him square in the small of the back. I see the quarterback get folded in half backwards. And yeah, I just put my head down and go, oh, no, I'm going to get screamed at. <laughs> and it totally just, man. And then I was done. I was like, I don't think he played me ever. After that, I, I started on the A team forever. And I, and I was like, no, I'm done. I was just wide enough to keep him from going across. But Six foot three freshman is huge. Dude. This you're not dude. even six foot. Have you even been six foot ever? You're no, not, no, I'm like five ten. eleven. So I look up at this dude. And I'm like, dude, I gotta block that. Like, what? <laughs> this isn't fair. Yeah, and you were probably it, five eight at the time, five seven. Five, yeah. Eight. Oh yeah, totally. And it and it brings me back like this, and I back to our mental issues. One of my biggest regrets in life was, and if I could go back in time, I think my life would be different from this moment. Was the freshman team always had to scrimmage against the sophomores mm -hmm. and it was basically just we're gonna whoop your ass for an hour and that's like that's the fun part of it like there was no like and it was always billed as that like oop, you guys are gonna get crushed tomorrow we're playing tomorrow and they sprung it on us and i'm like you know what no i'm not playing today i don't feel like getting beat up today i'm not scrimmaging the sophomores this is stupid so i didn't dress that day and my coach just laid into me and i'm like he's like go home I'm like okay and that was it i never played again I was just done. I, I am. I'm not that coach. I'll just yeah. tell you that. No, right. I know. I, and that it reminded I'm, me of this. Yeah, I know. I know what you're saying, but I'm. I, you were just saying no offense, but that that doesn't. I've yeah. seen those coaches. I I am intense. I'm a different person when I coach than when I'm not coaching. Um, but my job as a coach, I have always thought, and my head coach is the same way. In a lot of ways, you're building character. You're trying to make people tough as much as you can, and just to learn how to deal with failure. Winning is fun. Learning how to deal with failure is more important. Um, 
I think that that's really what just my job as a freshman coach is to just make you better and to yeah. have, I, I always say that, have fun, make it, it's a, it's called a basketball game, not a basketball class or whatever, you know? <laughs> so I, I, I've, I've done goofy stuff when I'm coaching and whatever, but I, I know I've seen those coaches and I was that coach when I started, I was, because I was young. I didn't know, you know, I was just doing, I was, but I've mellowed out a lot. And yeah. I think I've learned it's more about, respecting the kids and teaching them how to do it than expecting them to do it if that yeah. makes sense. you know and, it, and there's gonna be a mistake and that's where it fits in this movie like yeah what is your job as a music teacher like for this guy what's better to like and that's one of the reasons i don't like group activities like i want to be responsible for what i'm responsible for it, like i don't want to be in a band where this guy's going to be screaming at me if I like, I know when I make mistakes, I know when I'm not right. doing it right. Like, I don't need you to yell at me <laughs> to, to get me to do it better. Just like, Hey dude, try this or try that. And it, and it, again, it's, I think it's a experience thing and you're right. I think when as a younger teacher, even I was like that and I've mellowed out quite a bit, but I think that it happens with age in general. <sighs> but. All right, man, you want to uh, move on to something completely different? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little different. So oh, well, on, before we move on, any yes. any um, model kids? Oh, our, from... oh no, wait, we didn't do our grade. We didn't do grades. Okay. Well, obviously, I give it an A. But... Yeah, I, I, A, the same. I think it's a really, really, really good movie, yeah. and I think a lot of people should see it. I think yes, A. Uh, model model from the movie. I you got anything? There's a couple different things that I thought would be kind of cool. Um. I think if you had like the drum set with him sitting it and just J.K. Simmons over the top of him, just which of course you'd be like, I'm not buying that. Yeah, I'm not. Nope, nope. I don't um, want that on my shelf at all. Nope. <laughs> I thought that would be kind of cool, like a little mini diorama type thing, because that captures the movie and the action, yeah. whatever. Um, and the other thing that I thought would be kind of cool and different and out there, and you'd have to explain people what it is, is if you had a clear resin with ice cubes and a hand inside the a bloody hand <laughs> yeah i thought that would be freaking cool so well, I, I we're dragging this out one of my favorite my favorite band one of like my top three is swans and the, the lead singer michael girat is notorious he's basically this guy and i still love like i've watched him on stage berate his drummer who's drumming forever trying to draw that out of it and i'm like and I love the music, but I hate the, so, but a great movie. It's, oh, brought back the Everybody feels. Watch it. I don't like feeling. I don't like feeling. Uh, let's, you know, well, let's move on. Let's, to a movie yeah, let's move on to not feeling at all and just have a good time. Cocaine Bear. Synopsis, yes, Brian. Uh, well, it's, it's hard. To, how do you explain a movie like this? Uh, I mean, it's so deep and there's so many layers <laughs> of emotion to it. Uh, when a bear gets a hold of cocaine and just kills people. I don't know. That's it. That's a synopsis. You can stop right there. Yeah. Like you can just stop right there. Yeah. What'd you um, think? Let's, I'm going to throw up some pictures while we're talking. What'd you think? I thought some of the special effects were fantastic in this movie. I really did. I thought there were some cool kills, but I was underwhelmed by the movie in general. I, it, was kind of derivative of you know a lot of movies that are, and, and here's the well we'll talk about this in a second, but what is original in the movie outside of the fact that it's a cocaine bear nothing yeah I, nothing. That's what, I mean there's there's nothing that we haven't really seen before um you got the cop who's going out of jurisdiction to find out what's going you know and all it it's trying to be a little bit more than it is and i don't know it just I went in going, I can't wait to watch this. And I, at the end, I was like, well, I watched it. <laughs> so, so I think I had the opposite reaction. And it's not, I think we liked it the same. But I went in thinking it was going to be absolutely terrible. Mm -hmm. And I was pleasantly surprised by parts of it. Okay. And the rest was just like, you're, like you said, totally just derivative. And seen we've before, seen it yeah. all before. Yeah. But have you seen it with a bear on cocaine? <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's, and that's the premise. Like, we've, yeah. 
and the fact that it really happened not that necessarily but the fact that it, there was a, a bear that got high on cocaine and then blew its heart up or whatever it it didn't go on a killing spree but the fact that they took that and that's funny and original um i thought it, I, I was amused at times it just wasn't i don't know i don't know it just I, yeah I, and that's the one thing I watched it with Jamie and we were both surprised at how actually violent it was. Oh, it was really violent. Like yeah. it was, I was not, I was expecting more stuff to happen off camera than on camera, but that bear will maul him more. <laughs> and there's some Little. really, and again, in this, there's some really good shots like yeah. in the movie. Yeah. Um, what was the your bear- favorite kill? <laughs> or death? Not necessarily kill. What I would, was your favorite? I, I death would say movie? it was uh, the head in the can in the ranger's office lodge or whatever. That was probably the funniest one for me. My favorite was the stretcher coming out of the back of the ambulance, oh. and she flips, and then her face skids. <laughs> Let me get face skids across. Let me get it. There it is. Skids across the pavement. Horror, and they don't like oh they don't they show her face skidding right here skidding. yeah and then the bear is running a million miles an hour but before that like the bear standing on the door with the guy like i thought that was a cool shot like well There's, done yeah. like some cool yeah. stuff um the guy getting eaten in the tree was pretty brutal like yeah could you like that's always my fear if i ever get eaten by an animal is if they start with your feet because yeah. then you're like, God dang it, <laughs> this is going to suck for a long time. And, and it's, yeah, it's going to come all the way up. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah. get my head and, and end it. Yes. Yeah. So that's kind of what happens. He's hanging upside down and the bear's eating his feet. So I'm like, oh, that's awful. And then yeah. at the end, Ray Liotta gets gutted by the bears. Oh, yeah. And there was the intestines and all that stuff fall. That was good. You're right. Yeah. I mean, there yeah. was some great gore. If you're in for just go for the gore, watch it. It's not good. It's not great. There's there, a lot of people um, in it that I didn't expect to be in it. Like well, the, the female, um, Ranger, she was in justified season two or three. She's a great actress. She's been a lot of stuff. Okay. Yeah. She's good. And the, the one gangster is ice Cube's son. Yes. And then yeah. you have the guy that played the young Han solo in solo. Yep. And you had Eldridge. Felicity, whatever uh, Hutchins, what's her name? Uh, she was on the TV show. Felicity, the main mom. Yeah, she and her name. Did you see her name? It was weird. It was like it was S A R I. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It wasn't. Couldn't be Sarah. Had to be Sari, Sarah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I, hate I I don't want anyone to get on me for this, but I need you to agree with. Me. I might. The dirty cop with the dreads. I put her picture up here right now. She looks like a mixed race Jennifer Lawrence. If you go and look, it's like they uh, needed. Look. Like, get me an ethnic Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> like, this, that's what they ended up with. She wasn't a bad actress. No, she, not at all. It good. looks, but to me, it, she looks like Jennifer Lawrence. So it could be. Check it out. Go back. I'll, I'll look and, and, and see. And maybe if you remind me in a month and a half, when we <laughs> yes. actually record the damn wolf. But I, Ray Liotta looked dirty and gross. Loved it. I think that was the, one of the highlights of the movie is all the characters had character to them. Yes. Like, there was something quirky, something weird. And they, they were characters. So, yeah. Um, and it's it's definitely one you could put on in the background, look up when something's getting killed, and put your head down and do something else and and enjoy it. That I will say that I, I laughed out loud one time, and it was I did more when, than once. I actually did. I will admit I laughed more than one time. Just once for, and it was when uh, the bear went onto a was I don't know if he was on a cocaine high or whatever, but passed out on top of uh, Han Solo. <laughs> He was just trying to like I, it was like humping him and so, dude that was pretty funny. that was fun. i think that i laughed when the when the ambulance driver went through the windshield I laughed my ass. <laughs> and she just cartwheel like it was so brutal like that's yeah. the thing there was it was not there were no punches pulled in the dust at all like there's some shocking bru- like brutality so there is and what grade elizabeth would you banks. give it elizabeth banks the director oh, yes, of all that's yeah which great. when we saw that we were like what yeah <laughs> like, yeah um, All right, what grades? I give it a C plus. Yeah, I, I see. Same. Yeah. Like right in there. It, it's, it's not the worst thing. No, it's not the worst. I was expecting far worse, and it it and surprised was, me a bit. 
to surprise me up to a C. (laughs) And everyone's talked about how good it was. It's so great. It's so good. See, I heard the opposite. Everyone I talked to hated it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is not a, no. (sighs) Okay. All right. Here we go. You ready for the next movie we're going to watch? Here we are. Yes. Model kit. Model kit. Oh, model kit. Ray Liotta hanging from a neck strap of the cocaine bag with his guts hanging out <laughs> from, a, from the waterfall. Like, you, know, like you can't do anything. And the bear that. in the background, like, hey. oh, but in the very beginning, when that bear first jumps and hits that girl, it was like a truck. It just slammed yeah. it. But what about you? What about model kids for you? I, I, I like the Ray Liotta thing. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was just going to say, you could take uh, just to get a good model sculpture of a bear and just paint its face white and you got the cocaine dude i was thinking the same thing i thought about this yesterday when we were when i was like okay what what find an stl of a bear do that make it all bloody and powdery and then somehow find some sculpt the the bag those red bags and put a bunch of red bags around it you got your cocaine bear model perfect like i almost kind of want to do that (laughs) just sell them it's like i'm gonna sculpt someone sculpt the cocaine bags come on Someone do that I, it, in ZBrush. It wouldn't be hard. Would it just little bags? It could be yeah. any little bag. That's you true. Know? All right. All right. What do we watch? What what movie are we going to have that's going to make me question why I was born? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> it might do that. Um, it's shocking. All right. It's on Netflix. It's a recent release, which okay. is kind of why I like. You ready? Yep. It's an Adam Sandler joint. Is joint is that the right word when they That's are a in a movie? Joint. A spite league joint. I don't know. Uh, the spaceman. Oh, I just put that on my list. It just came out. There you go. Yep. So yeah. I want to watch the spaceman. All right. So that's what we're watching next. The spaceman. All I right, everybody. This has been a long one. This is probably our longest one we've ever done. Ryan, I thank do. you for hanging in there. I know it's late for you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well. I got Special Olympics tomorrow, bud. So hey, I, good it, luck. It, I hope everybody does well. It, it, it they always do well. It's I a fantastic did. thing. It's the best part of being a high school basketball coach. I is doing this. I went to Special Olympics once as a spectator for a student, and it was one of the best things I've ever seen. Like, yeah, it's like it's. I think it, when it, I retire, it's one thing I think I might want to get involved with somehow. So it's I love it. That's how I got involved with this. We can talk about it later, but yeah, yeah. go. We'll uh, we'll talk. Everybody, thanks for watching Model and Movie. Next episode is The Spaceman. So check it out. See everybody. Links down below for everything. Thanks, Brian. We'll see you next time. Okay, bye.